Good morning and thank you for joining with me once again. Today we're going to look at numbers 34, but um, I'm going to let you read that. It's a bit, again, uh, one of those passages where there are lots of details. It's to do with the first section, the first 15 verses deal with the boundaries for the tribes and the allocation for three tribes or two and a half tribes, setting out details. And then the second part is about those who are allowed or assigned to allocate the land or the inheritance for the nation, Joshua and Eliezer, the ecclesiastical and or the civil and the ecclesiastical. But I want to begin by looking at you with the whole question of inheritance, because that is, of course, what this is all about. This is God uh, giving his inheritance to his people, the nation of Israel. I was struck uh, just considering some of those inherit inheritance stories, how people allocate their wealth when they're no longer here. You may have heard of Karl Lagerfeld, one of Chanel's creative directors, that a year ago he left his 150 million fortune to his cat, Chouffette. A bit strange, you might think. Uh, however, that's just his choice. Or maybe what about the dog? The dog that inherited 12 million from the New York hotelier. Uh, the billionaire Leona Helmsley, called the Queen of Mean. She left her pet dog called Trouble, 5.97 million pounds. Well, bit of a problem that, you can imagine. Or what about the richest woman in Asia, Nina Wang? She left her entire fortune when she died at 69 of ovarian cancer to her Fen Chu master, Tony Chang. It was a promise for eternal life. Or take the Portuguese aristocrat. He left his money to strangers from a phone directory. It was uh, Luis Carlos Unohora. Uh, there's a whole lot more to that name. And anyway, he made... He just went to the phone directory, he listed, he just lifted 70 names out of the phone directory and they were contacted when he passed away to be told that they were one of his beneficiaries of his will. And then there's the one of the man who left his money, uh, £26,000 in Hampshire, 1968. He left his money in trust for Jesus Christ. The problem the lawyers have is that they have, it's the difficulty in proving the, the Lord Jesus Christ, who can tell who is the real Jesus Christ? So they say. And then there's one final one I share with you, and that's the man who left in 1928. He left half a million to the British government to help with the national debt. I know you most certainly find that hard to believe, but however, the problem is it's now stuck in legal limbo because of an interesting stipulation made by the donor, because it can only be used to pay off the entire debt. But here's the shock. Wait for it. The UK's bill stands at £1.2 trillion. Pounds. That is the national debt, which is about 3,000 times the amount of money that he left. His fund is now worth £350 million. So you can see that inheritances are important. And even as I mentioned the word inheritance, uh, people begin to get interested if they see these sorts of things. Figures, it stirs something within us. Now, maybe what it's stirring is a a sense of uh, intrigue. I mean, I know it intrigues me, these sorts of stories, and I'm sure they intrigue you as well. But the one that will intrigue you more than anything else is when you begin to realise or when you discover your name is included in the list of beneficiaries that somebody else has included in their will. Well, the wonderful and amazing thing is that when you come to read the Bible, you discover that your name is included Numbers 34 talks about the inheritance that God is giving for his people, the nation of Israel. Of course, that is an actual historical event, but that actual historical event points forward to another bigger, bigger actual historical event, and that is what God in his will eternally will do for you and for I. Now, we have been adopted into God's family, and since we've been adopted into his family, when we came to put our trust in the Lord, then everything that God has for his Son, in this sense, is ours as well. That's what we read, and I'd like you to, if you have a chance today, to turn to Ephesians 1. 
And let me just read a couple of verses of this to you, just to set this in its context. Uh, from verse 3 we read, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in every, with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms, because we are united with Christ. Verse 5 says, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. Again, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. But you see there, because we have been adopted into God's family, we're now included in the list of beneficiaries of God's inheritance. And this section of Ephesians goes on to talk a little bit about that. So, then we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear Son. So we now experience this grace. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom. What a great verse. We'll think maybe a little bit more about that on Sunday when we're talking about Joseph's prison experience. But he has purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgive our sins. He has showered his kindness, kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. And so he's given us these great blessings in the moment. Right now, these are what we have. Then he says, furthermore, because we are, verse 11, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God. Now, you'd pause there, isn't that right? Because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God. Now, isn't it interesting when you listen to the tenses of that? These these tenses help to understand or us to understand something of our personal story. It says, we are, right now, present tense, united with Christ. That's your life experience today. You are already united with Christ. You are part of the God's family. You are, you, are a, you are adopted in there. You are a co-heir with Jesus. But then it goes on to say, the second test, tense says, we have received. This perfect passive, this sense which says, Something has happened in the past, but it goes on forever and ever. We have already received it. We haven't yet entered into the fullness of it, but we have received it. Think about that. You most certainly, well, in your lifetime, you may have received the odd inheritance, but you had to wait until the person died in order to get it. That's true. And Jesus has also died, and in his death he wins for you and I an inheritance. Isn't it amazing? We're united with Christ. Uh, we have received it. And then verse 14 goes on to say, just in case you have any concerns about it, the Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised. And so that completes, as it were, the whole document, as it were, the, the legal document of your, of God's will for you through his Son. God has a plan. The plan, as he says, is to bring everything together under the authority of the Lord Jesus, everything in heaven and earth. That's what he says. It's a wonderful purpose that he's going to do everything. And we know Colossians 1.15 tells us that Jesus is, as it says there, and I quote, supreme over all creation. And because Jesus, this is God's plan, this is Jesus' part in this plan, he is supreme over all creation, he bring he and acts it through his death on the cross for us, then he wins us this inheritance. What do we know about it? Well, First Peter tells us in 1 verse 4 that it will never perish, spoil or fade. It is reserved in heaven for you who are kept by God's power. Wow, that means that you're not worried. You, know, you could get an inheritance. I mean, I've, in my past, I've received one or two little inheritances, inheritances from family members. I recall my grandfather leaving me a few hundred pounds. But, you know, those few hundred pounds, they really, as time goes on, I mean, they may increase in value if they were invested somewhere, but generally speaking, they wouldn't buy very much today, would they? But you see, the inheritance that God has kept for you and I will never perish, will never spoil, will never fade. So there's something wonderful about that. What is this inheritance, really, as we look forward to it? I think this inheritance is ultimately going to be our heavenly future. This is everything God has for us in the future. 
Revelation 21, 5 says, Behold, I am making everything new. We are secure. It is secure. We are secure because we know Jesus says in John 10, he says that no one shall pluck you out of my Father's hand. And what does this do to us? Well, it surely helps us to endure to the end. It makes us realise that everything is worth it. Now, I don't know what you're going through right now, today, but I would just say this to you. I, I know it's hard maybe for you where you are. Maybe, maybe your present circumstances are not pleasant and you would really love just to be lifted as a, airlifted out of them as, as it were from a stormy sea and brought into a safe and secure place. I cannot change your circumstances. But in the middle of your circumstances, God who has, has permitted those circumstances can bring you to a safe and secure place as he reminds you of these truths. You see, they can, they can, as it were, protect you in the circumstances. They can, as it were, as you ponder, as you think, as you meditate, as you embrace and as you believe these things, they shape you as a person so that the circumstances you find yourself in remaining the same have not the same impact on you. You are a different person. And so if today, for example, I was to say to you, I have just learned that you are to receive £10 million. And that is as that is absolutely guaranteed. That would change you. I have no doubts it would change you. No matter how many people say it would never change me. Yes, it will change you if that was to happen. How it changes you, I have no idea. It may frighten the life out of you with the responsibility. Or it may thrill you with the possibility. But the greater thing is that when we understand what God has won for us through his son Jesus, this inheritance, and really embrace it and realise that we already have it, it's secure, we have yet to enter into the fullness of it, that changes you too. So try to, try to let that be the thought that is yours, not only today, but pray it into your heart. And, and I'll pray for us just in a moment. I want to thank you for your prayers for these days. I, I have a very, very busy uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday with a special event on by Zoom where I'm going to be teaching and mentoring and engaging with a whole lot of folk from all over Europe. So that's something that I really value your prayers for, that everything would work smoothly and that the talks that I give will be just what will be helpful for the people who are in these networks. There are people from every country nearly in Europe coming together, so it's quite a diverse cultural and background group of people. So that's so thank you for praying, if you've got a minute, to pray for that. It's called ELF. For those, many of you may know it, but and I work alongside Paul Coulter from Northern Ireland here, and so I just ask you for prayers for Paul and another good friend from Scotland, Jim Crooks. So there's different networks I work in. So if you can remember all that and make sense of all that smush I'm trying to say, I'm sure the Lord will figure it out for us. Anyway, but let me pray for us today as we go into this day. Father, we thank you and praise you for your good and generous heart to us. We thank you that even all of the different bits and pieces of our lives fit together for a good purpose, just like the baking of the cake. Yes, the salt and the sugar combine together, along with the other things, to make the end result something wonderful. And Father, we know that in our lives you have something wonderful for us. The end is going to be the new beginning of glory. We step into the inheritance that is ours through Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, it's hard for us sometimes to believe these things because of where we are right now. But I pray for every one of us that you will help us to be able to embrace these promises and to let them be like the master key that opens all the dark moments of our lives so that we can always step out into the freedom and the joy and the beauty and the glory of everything that is ours because we are united to Jesus Christ, our Saviour, by faith. Thank you. Amen.